Right, for this video I'll be working through question 2 of the level 2 2015 electricity exam. Question 2. Monique builds a swing to show electromagnetic conduction. It comprises of a light rod pivoted at the top so it can swing the loop of copper wire and a loop of copper wire at the bottom, she places two strong magnets at the lowest point of the motion with opposite poles facing each other. The diagrams below show the loop entering the magnetic field. So, just uh, first off, these crosses mean you're digging for treasure, which means the magnetic field goes into the page. Okay, A. Determine the direction of the force acting on the electrons in the wire BC due to their motion in the magnetic field. So there are a few ways to go about this. Um, I'll do the first way. We'll assume we're a little electron. So let's just find here. Here's our wire from BC. Let's just pick any old electron in the wire. That electron is moving this way. That's its direction. So you could say if this was just sort of an electron beam in the wire, that would be the direction of his current, so as to speak. Um, so we can use the left hand slap rule, the right hand slap rule is for positive charges, left hand is for negative charges, so if we have our thumb, we see our thumb is a direction of the current or the direction the electron is going, which is just the current, fingers go into the page and the force comes out of your palm, so out of your palm means it's down, down, that's the force. Another way to figure it out is induction so there are quite a few there's like Fleming's right hand rule uh, for induction but really as long as all the vectors are orthogonal and you've got it right the right way around um, just about any hand rule will work if it's set up correctly so there's one way you can do it uh, magnetic field using your fingers is into the page um, the thumb is still the current um, and out of the palm is the force or is is the velocity so and this is for conventional current so this would mean the conventional current if, if the wire is moving from left to right the conventional current would be from C to B so that's that's conventional current so they would, they would assume there's a, a battery with a positive terminal there and a negative terminal there pushing the conventional current from B to C which would mean electrons flow opposite to that they go from I know from C to B, so the electrons go opposite to that, so opposite the arrow I've just drawn there, so they'd go down as well. So that's the other way to work it out. Um, yeah, there's multiple ways to do it. Right, at the instant shown in the diagram, the voltage across the wire BC is 0.15 millivolts. I'm just going to write this in standard form um, 0.15 times 10 to the negative 3 um, volts, just so it's easy for me. And the magnetic field strength is this, B, I'm going to call that B. Um, and calculate the speed of the wire loop. Speed of the wire on the loop. So if we go to our formula sheet, we have voltage equals magnetic field times the velocity times our little v is always velocity. So V equals B V L. In other words, I'm going to move the B and the L to the other side. So I'm going to divide both sides by B and L. Uh, v over B. L equals a little v. In other words, v equals what, 0 0.15 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 3.0 times 10 to the negative 3 times the length of wire in the field, which is 6 centimeters. That has to be in meters because I'm working in meters 0 0.06 meters, which gives me an answer of. 0.83 meters per second negative one. Notice 2SF again. Next question. Monique repeats the experiment but starts the swing from a greater height. The speed of the loop at the point shown in the diagram is doubled. Explain what happens to the size and the current on the in the loop. So we've got V equals BVL from before. Yeah. Or in other words, if we substitute in V equals IR. Yeah, if we substitute that in, we get I R equals B V R uh, B V little V L, or I is equal to B. I'm going to divide both sides by R over R. So if uh, yeah, move, yeah, right, V is doubled, doubled. 
um, I will current will double double as well. I'll move that over here as well. Assuming um, assuming what? Right, the resistance changes uh, that would muck everything up. So assuming R doesn't change. Yeah, otherwise it'd just ruin everything. Right. Short time later, the whole loop is inside the magnetic field. Write a comprehensive explanation about the current in the loop when the whole loop is in the magnetic field. So let's just draw that down here, just so we can have something to sort of reference. Here we go, here's our loop. And we'd put a whole lot of crosses everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I'll chuck a whole lot of crosses and so on and so forth. Right here, and that's our wire coming up. I better just check the labels. It goes A, B, C, D. Hold on. E. Ooh, my video is mucking up. A, B, C, D. There we go. It goes A, B, C, D. Oh, yeah. B, B, D. Done. And my direction of the velocity is this way. So that's, that's V. So if I use that same, so from over the other side of the page, I said the current is going to be going, conventional current is going to go up on this, the one. Um, and on the other side, by the same law, your conventional current will be going up on this way, because it's just two wires just shifted across. So conventional current I2 will be going, they'll be both going up. So the current will be zero. This is because is because there will uh, there will be an induced current. Oh, that's meant to be D U C E D current from D to A. So it's this one here, yeah, on the left side, side, and C to B on the right side, right side. These currents act in opposite directions so directions so cancel each other out each other uh, each other out and that's it and that's why you don't get if you have a whole loop inside a magnetic field um, and it's moving across it and it's like a square um, yeah you don't get current or oh, current won't flow